Have you ever tried to use a drill to hammer in a nail? You might be able to get the nail into the wall, but the next time you try to use the drill, it's probably not going to work because that wasn't its intended purpose. And today we're going to talk about the Apostle Paul and how he tells us we all have an intended purpose. That's right. Hi, I'm Shauna and this is Pete with Gallahue Family Discipleship and we are coming at you today um, from our home, which we do every day, we take to social media. We are ordained ministers with the Church of God, and we love uh, teaching and sharing the Word of God. So we hope that this inspires you as uh, we disciple our family. We're just uh, letting you in on our best kept secret. <laughs> Today we are going to be in Romans chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. And we're going to be addressing um, just what purpose you're called to do. Uh, the scripture actually says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scripture. So that's just verses 1 and 2, and that's what we're going to focus on today. And the thing we want to focus on is the apostle Paul said that he was separated by God for a purpose. And you know that we want everyone re uh, watching this to understand that you have a purpose. God created you with a purpose in mind. Just like whenever someone created a hammer, a hammer was designed to drive nails into wood. Uh, and if you use that in a different way, then you're not using it the proper way. And then whenever it comes time to, to use it in a different way, if you use a drill to hammer a nail, you're probably going to tear up the drill. True. So in our lives, we have to realize that if we're not fulfilling the purpose that God created us for, then we're, then we're off the mark. We're doing things the wrong way. That's right. Um, we also know that in this scripture, the Apostle Paul points out that Jesus had a purpose. He was born for a purpose. Uh, God was going to use him to save the world, and Jesus took on that responsibility to be the sacrifice for all men. Well, that's true. Uh, the puppy's jumping on the back door. He's kind of distracted me. He's wanting outside. <laughs> but, you know, whenever he fulfilled that purpose, what he did was is he gave life to everyone. Right? The opportunity for everyone to escape death. We have purpose in our life, and when God puts it in, in our hearts and directs us, that purpose is not always just for us. It's true. Others are depending upon us to fulfill our purpose, mm -hmm. right? If we're called into a ministry or to help someone or to do certain things in, in this world, if we don't do those, it impacts more than just our lives. It could impact future generations. One of the analogies we like to use is as dominoes falling, right? If our domino doesn't fall, the next domino doesn't have a chance to fall. That's true. It's just like uh, with children, I use an illustration of a Kleenex box. And that tissue has a purpose, and you pull that tissue out. But as that tissue is being pulled out to fulfill its purpose, to wipe your nose or to catch a sneeze, whatever it is, it pulls the next tissue out. So you are uh, preparing others to fulfill their purpose. And we have got to make sure that uh, we hit the mark, that we work to do what God has called us to do, and that we allow every part of our life to be used. You know, the Apostle Paul was someone who allowed every part of his life to be used. We know in the scripture that he even talks about um, his origin of where he was from, that he was a Roman citizen, but he was also a Jew. And those were things that enabled him to get in front of people to share the gospel that otherwise he wouldn't have had. Right. Shauna wrote down in her notes here an analogy of a credit card being used as a key. Yeah. I guess when we were on vacation, one of the things, we stayed in the house with my brother and his family, but there was only one key to the house. Yeah. So whoever had the key, if the other one tried to get in the home, they were kind of stuck and locked outside. So they used a card, right? But it's rough on that card. It destroys that card eventually, yeah. right? It'll break that credit card. And whenever you go to use that credit card for its intended purpose, which is to purchase something or to get money out of the bank, it may not work. Uh, what we want you to realize that in your life is that uh, God has a purpose for you. Yep. And we don't want there to be an opportunity to slip away to where when it's time for you to fulfill it, you're not ready for that purpose. That's right. You're broken or you're hurt or you're, you're lost or you're distracted by something else. I wasn't called to be Pete. Pete wasn't called to be me. Our boys weren't called to be us. Uh, we have to understand that everyone has a specific purpose and we can't fit our frame into someone else's mold uh, because doing that would be um, quite uncomfortable and unpleasant to see. <laughs> right, and a lot of times in ministry we think that as long as we're doing something we're being profitable. 
but we know from scripture that the Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. So you can actually be making sacrifices for God, but not doing God's will. You're doing something totally outside of what he has called you to do. Just as Saul did in the Bible, when he was called to be king, he tried to be priest and make sacrifices, and it angered God. So you have to be willing to do exactly what God has called you to do. Absolutely. So going forward this week, we're starting a new book. Hopefully last week you got a lot of background information. Uh, you watched those videos and you... Uh, Maybe you've read a handy. Right, hopefully. And uh, this week we want you to read chapter one over and over. Discuss it with your family. Uh, get involved. Share it with coworkers. Ask questions. As we go through the book of Romans, you're going to hear scriptures that you have heard all your life, thousands and thousands of times, because it's so rich with scripture uh, that is used popularly and commonly by pe preachers, by teachers, by common lay people in the church. Because it does such a good job in explaining the gospel and uh, the life of a Christian and even the life of sinners. So we want to remind you that every day you're going to intentionally live for Christ. That you get up every day and you're going to exalt God. You're going to encounter God. You're going to edify yourself with the reading of the word. And you're going to engage this world for Jesus Christ. So until next time, may God bless you. God bless.